Hello, everyone. This is Maria Fakes. I'm Executive Director of Adonis Fertility International. We're located here in uh, beautiful Colorado, United States. And today with me, I have one of our phenomenal guests, uh, Margarita, Margarita Busava. Hello, Margarita. Hello. <laughs> yes. Good pleasure. On a pleasure. Oh, yes. Uh, so she says it's actually evening for her. So Margarita is our head embryologist of Adonis Medical Group. She is located in Ukraine, in Kiev, Ukraine. Um, no matter if you're looking, you know, this webinar internationally, you know, you outside of United States or you here in the United States, trust me that the information that Margarita will be sharing, it's applicable no matter where you are. Are okay. So embryology is really, you know, universal field, and then Margarita will share with you that, um, you know, the standards and procedures. You know, it's actually not established per country. It's really unified for the industry. So many things that she's going to be describing. Again, you know, it doesn't matter that she's in Ukraine and you are in a different country. It still applies to you. But what I really appreciated about this opportunity to, to be with Margarita, okay, um, and, and she knows that as well, because typically, guys, you know, when you deal with fertility, you know, embryologists uh, are on the, you know, they're kind of like back office, right? They do a lot of the magic. They're very vital um, part of your fertility process. Uh, you will understand, you know, once you, well, I'm sure you know intuitively, but also once you hear Margarita, you will know that as well. But typically, you know, this is not the team that you are meeting, okay? Typically, you know, you're talking to maybe your coordinator, medical coordinator, you're talking to your fertility doctor, right? Uh, embryology suggests uh, creating the magic uh, while you're not watching and, and no one has access to them. And yet many of the questions that you might have throughout your process, fertility process, they do apply to embryology. It's really hard to get embryologists on a call, okay? It's really hard to have meetings with the embryologists. So the fact that they have a head of embryology department is here with us, I think it's really huge. So if you, whatever questions you have, you know, do, you know, type them in. We also have prepared some questions just from what we see common questions coming on and off. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So uh, let's jump in. Uh, Margarita, yeah, Pritsta, and, and guys, I'm going to be translating Margarita and then um, translating to you in English. Um, uh, Маргарита, я да, представила вас и объяснила, ну, я знаю, что вы много понимаете, да, что обычно, да, эмбриолог не там, поэтому давайте начнем. So uh, the very first question I, I had, I really want to kind of start from the basics. Right, you know, kind of from foundation of embryology. Um, so Margarita, talk to us about like process of embryo creation, right? Uh, again, you might smile and say, you know, why even listen to that? But I cannot tell you how many questions that have been absolutely fundamental we have been getting. So we thought, okay, let's start with that foundation. So you have an idea, you're saying, I want to have a baby. You know, we need to create embryos, right? We cannot have a baby in the natural way. So what's happening next? Margarita, da, давайте, uh, let's, let's, let's discuss that. Mm -hmm. um, um, найчастіше запитання, ну, взагалі, ем, ембріологія, це така закрита система, е, де е, відбувається, так як і в житті, в реальному житті відбувається те, що не повинно бути доступне людському оку. І тому е, багато запитань е, пов'язані з тим, що люди не бачать, як, як це відбувається. Окей, okay, let me translate. Yeah, so Margarita is saying yes, you know, it's very natural that people have some, you know, um, some very foundational questions to embryology because embryology naturally deals with something that you cannot see with your human eye. Yes, you know, it's a process, you know, that is happening, you know, you know, if naturally within our bodies, you know, or embryology, you know, the creating, but it's something that is not visually uh, accessible. So that's why it's such a close niche um, side of the fertility journey. Mm -hmm. Ну, по-перше, ембріологія – це така закрита система. Багато людей не уявляють, що це таке. Це не просто кімната, не просто лабораторія. Це велика група кімнат, маленьких лабораторій, яка несе кожне своє призначення, тобто виконує свою функцію. 
Mm -hmm. And so uh, embryology is really a very close system. And within that, uh, um, you know, every everyone is uh, responsible for their very unique function. Велику роль відіграє, чим наповнена ця ембріологія, тобто обладнання. Ембріологічна лабораторія повинна мати професійне класне обладнання. По-перше, мікроскопи, які дають змогу гарно візуалізувати ембріологу і роздивлюватися різні структури клітин, саме яйцеклітин, сперматозоїдів і сукупності яйцеклітин і сперматозоїдів ембріонів. І е, інкубатори, власне, такі системи, е, які е, нагадують за своєю будовою, за своєю функцією, нагадують труби жінки, де ми, власне, культивуємо е, ембріончики для того, щоб потім пересадити майбутній мамі. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if talking like in a basic terms, yes, you know, the success of embryo laboratory really depends on very exceptional equipment. So it's absolutely must. Yes. So, um, and as a priority, of course, you know, there are many equipments, but, you know, the very key ones are some powerful microscopes, very advanced microscopes. And, you know, that's exactly what we have at the Adonis uh, in the laboratory and also incubators. Um, you know, naturally, microscope allow, you know, embryologists, the specialists to see all of the things that cannot be seen by the human eye. And, um, and I'm sorry, let me let people in and then incubators of course are uh, performing the functions of you know the tubes right of the uh women's tubes you know where the creation of the uh, precious embryos are happening so you know that function when it's outside of the human body is fulfilled by the incubator then so after the embryos are created we could be um transferring it to the uh human body mm -hmm. Ну і наступним таким самим важним моментом є люди, які працюють, тобто люди, які мають спеціалізовану освіту і люди, які мають певний термін роботи в ембріологічній лабораторії і мають досвід, величезний досвід роботи, тому що ембріологічна робота не заключається в правильності виконання етапів. Це е, так же, як і в житті, е, в певні моменти правильність прийняття рішень тих чи інших. Не завжди е, все йде так, як ти собі запланував. Е, наприклад, е, ми плануємо отримати яйцеклітини, там, дві яйцеклітини, наприклад, у жінок старшого репродуктивного віку. Ми отримуємо одну яйцеклітину. Так, спрацював організм, ми отримали одну яйцеклітину для того, щоб ми провели процедуру запліднення, наприклад, іксі. Ця яйцеклітина повинна бути дозрівша. Вона не дозрівша, і ми е, проводимо наступні етапи для того, щоб цю клітину дозріти. Тобто ми, ми додаємо інші середовища, ми вичікуємо інший час. Тобто для того, щоб зрозуміти, як правильно себе поводити в той чи іншій ситуації, ембріолог повинен мати досвід. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so the next thing is that it's very important, of course, for the embryo laboratory are the people who are working in this laboratory. Okay. And um, Margarita says it's not just, you know, um, the things that you would expect from any medical professional, you know, like they need to have, you know, proper credentials and proper training. Um, but also a vast um, expertise and, you know, years of experience. That's very important. And the reason is because this is a field where um, a professional needs to make uh, many intuitive decisions at a moment notice. There is not enough time to debrief or to discuss things. So embryologists needs to be so versed and so experienced in um, you know, their uh, field of work that at a very critical moment when things are not going as planned, and Margarita has shared an example of what it means not going as planned, the best decision can be made, okay? So example could be, you know, that, um, you know, uh, there was an egg retrieval and it's a um, woman uh, of an older age, you know, past certain category, uh, age category. Um, 
uh, and the fertility doctors through all of the uh, examinations and tests was predicting that there will be extraction, uh, they were expecting two oocytes um, coming as a result of the stimulation and the egg retrieval. Once that egg retrieval has happened, there was only one um, oocyte, okay? So then embryologist needs to on the spot to decide and that one oocyte was not even mature oocyte, right? So again, you cannot just go by the rules uh, because it's a human body. It's someone's dream. It might be the last chance for someone's stimulation, right? If the age is very, you know, uh, very advanced. Um, so uh, then embryologists need to make decisions about um, creating condition where that oocyte could mature, you know, before going through the fertilization uh, with the semen and so forth. So it's really at any given moment, embryologist in making so many decisions in order to bring you to your dream. Okay. Uh, yes, of course, there is a huge role of fertility doctor and so forth, but that's, you know, day to day of what embryologist is going through. Mm -hmm. Єдине, яке незмінне правило залишається в ембріологічній лабораторії, це те, що е, все повинно проводитись під, під подвійним контролем. Один робить, а інший е, стоїть і просто наблюдає е, для того, щоб не виникла помилка. Ми по декілька разів звіряємо. Це я, до речі, хочу сказати, у пацієнтів дуже е, часте запитання, яке виникає, чи не сплутаєте ви щось там роблячи. Е, і, е, в світі такі помилки бувають, тому що е, не бувають помилок тільки у тих, хто нічого не робить. І, але ж це стосується людських життів і права на помилку ми не маємо. Тому о, всі процедури, які проводяться в нашому медичному центрі, проводяться під, під подвійним контролем. Е, ми не виходимо по одному ембріологу на роботу, тобто обов'язково повинно бути двоє. Відбувається пункція, один відбирає яйце клітини, інший стоїть. Особливі моменти увага звертається, коли йдуть підписи прізвищ на зборі яйцеклітин, підписи прізвищ при підготовці еякуляту і особлива увага, коли складається все, все, все в чашку, де потім ембріолог буде поєднувати. Тобто кожен етап проводиться подвійним контролем. Два ембріологи. Це незмінно. Ніколи не буває так, що один ембріолог робить, а інший займається своїми справами. Ми не допускаємо це. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and what Margarita wanted to stress that is very important in embryology, she said, yes, yeah, so as you could see, you know, in the decisions, there could be different paths, you know, because some of the situations could be unpredictable and embryologist needs to think on their feet. Uh, a lot and rely on their extensive expertise. But one rule, she says, that is really a golden rule in embryology, right? And if you have any embryology that do not have this rule, then perhaps, you know, consider different embryology. But that rule is of double control. That is absolutely must. Because um, what that means is that never embryologist is working by herself or himself, okay? There is always two people for any given procedure. The reason is that as a human beings, okay, um, even the most trained ones, we could make mistakes, right? She, Margarita said that the only human that don't make mistakes are the people that never do anything, right? Uh, but in a question of embryology, when we deal with lives of humans, right, you know, I didn't say it, you know, didn't say it beautifully, with the human life, uh, right? You know, with such an incredible essence where um, no error can be made. That's why the double control is very important. So, you know, that's what we're using in our laboratory because, you know, one of the questions that of course is always being asked, how can I be sure that this is my biomaterial that is being used in the process and so forth. At every single step, there is always two embryologists, and they're not just physically uh, located in the embryo laboratory, right? Like one is doing work, the other one is doing, you know, another work. They're not separated in tasks. One is doing, the other one is watching. Both needs to be then doing the sign up and, you know, things like that. You know, for example, egg retrieval, one is accepting embryos, the other one is watching, signing, you know, doing all, like, it's always, always, always double control, very important. Це ж стосується а, того ж самого процесу. В нашу клініку привозять ембріони з інших країн. 
І коли відбувається процес передачі, особливо обов'язково в цей момент присутній кур'єр, який зазвичай знімає відео, менеджер, який відповідає за супровід цієї пари, чиї ембріони прибули до нас в клініку, і ми обидва ембріологи, які на той момент є вільними. Ми детально перевіряємо всі, всю документацію, яка прибула. Ми заздалегідь запрошуємо в клініці, яка передає нам необхідні документи. Це стандартний перечень, який ми запитуємо, які ембріони, який день культури, і потім детально звіряємо всі ці соломинки, які нам прийшли з тими документами, які є. Зазвичай, якби помилок не буває. Ну, буває не відповідність, наприклад, з ім'ям в документах написана літера «Ай», наприклад, а повинна бути «Вай» – такі моменти. Але навіть в прикордонному контролі, в, при пересіченні кордону в паспортах дозволяється декілька помилок. І тому ми якби, це допускаємо, якщо ми бачимо, що в інших документах все нормально. Тому ми приймаємо, обидва ембріологи ставимо підпис і записуємо вже далі в свої лабораторні журнали, куди ми помічаємо вміщаємо ці ембріончики. Тобто це такий важливий етап, момент. Yeah. Yeah. And so the double control also, of course, you know, comes when we're accepting um, uh, biomaterial uh, material into the laboratory. Yes. Uh, so it's always, you know, of course, two representative of the embryo lab, so two embryologists. Um, uh, when we are also doing it at the Donis, we also have a manager, the coordinator that is managing the case. Yes. Yeah, so that person is also there. Um, and of course the bio courier, because a lot of times we're dealing with a hand carry courier because, you know, we're dealing with the international transport. We only work with a hand carry courier. So it's never, you know, shipment via cargo or anything, always hand carry courier. So you're going to have four people checking all of the documentations, um, also making videos of all of that acceptance, you know, checking documentations, checking, um, checking the unique labeling that is on every store, on every vial, vial uh, is used if um, transporting semen. Uh, and then, you know, two people are doing entries uh, in the journal and in the system as well. So that's really how detailed um, process is. So the chances that anything can be, you know, um, any mistake can be done, it's absolutely not possible. At least, you know, this is like for the head of laboratory, this is one of the biggest areas of the process that, you know, Margarita is responsible for and on establishing and ensuring that quality and integrity control, um, you know, that's a big part of embryo laboratory. Um, that, uh, Ще б я б хотіла б звернути увагу, uh, у пацієнтів uh, виникає часто запитання, uh, От, наприклад, відбулася функція, і в цей же день пацієнт запитує, скільки там у нас ембріончиків. От я б хотіла б для людей, які не мають медичної освіти, біологічної освіти, розказати, з якого моменту ми починаємо ембріон вважати ембріончиком. Тобто Excellent. перший день, коли... Let me translate that. I think it's excellent, excellent seg segue into like, you know, the creation of the embryo itself. So Margarita said what really, you know, she, she then wants to jump in and you could see like she's so excited and so passionate about her subject. I know she could go on and on about things. So uh, if there's anything we're missing or anything you have on your mind, please ask. But uh, what she would like to talk about um, in many cases, she's being asked, like, uh, so there was a, um, a function, you know, retrieval of the eggs, yes, and then it was insemination with the sperm, and immediately uh, families, patients will be asking, okay, well, how many embryos do I have, yes? So Margarita wanted to really kind of dig deep and um, explaining to you from which moment we're considering embryos. Mm -hmm. Значить, з того моменту, як ми отримали яйцеклітини, тут ще такий є важний момент. Ми отримали яйцеклітини і декілька годин цим яйцеклітинам даємо відпочити, тому що вони оточені таким кумулюсом, які, тобто клітини допоміжні, які несуть спеціальну функцію і допомагають довідбуватися певним процесом цих яйцеклітинах уже поза межами організму. Тобто після пункції ми отримуємо яйцеклітини 2 години. Вони стоять в інкубаторі, а потім після цього ми тільки оцінюємо їхню якість і зрілість, тому що незрілі яйцеклітини запліднювати не можна. Окей. Okay. 
Yes, yes. Uh, so um, first, you know, when eggs have been retrieved, okay, um, uh, and uh, by the way, a lot of times you might hear a medical team using the word oocytes. Uh, often I'm being asked, like, what is oocyte? Oocyte and eggs is the same thing. Yes. Uh, so, but maybe for the shortage of the word, we're going to use the word eggs. Uh, so uh, once eggs have been retrieved, um, they're actually not immediately being uh, fertilized uh, by the sperm, okay? Uh, because, you know, um, first they need to go th through the process um, that is very important, you know, for their development. So for about two hours, they're going to be staying in the incubator, you know, finishing those functions. After um, that, uh, the eggs are being evaluated from the different parameters because they need to be in the process. We could only use the mature oocytes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. И е, от перше запитання, яке виникає у пацієнтів, е, лікар сказав, що ми отримали 10 яйцеклітин, а ви кажете 8. Це нормальний процес, тому що в запліднення ми взяли тільки ті, які зрілі, які за ці 2 години дозріли. От 8 яйцеклітин. На цьому етапі ці яйцеклітини, ці клітинки, які ми отримали, називаються яйцеклітини, і ми спілкуємося спілкуючись між собою, ми кажемо клітини, там, у нас вісім клітин. В цей час е, інші ембріологи е, е, відмивають е, отриманий еякулят партнера е, для того, щоб ми потім могли їх поєднати. І навіть в той момент, коли ми проводимо процедуру запліднення іксі, ми ще ж ще кажемо клітини. І на наступний день, коли ми приходимо і через 24 години і оцінюємо результат запліднення, ми ще кажемо клітини. Це вже не яйцеклітини окремо, не сперматозоїди окремо, це продукт їхнього поєднання зигота, але ми ще називаємо це клітини. Не кажемо про те, що це ще ембріони. Починаючи з другого дня культивування, 48 годин, ми вже звертаємось до них, до майбутніх дітей, як ембріончики. Наші ембріончики, ми їх називаємо. І так їх називаємо до моменту вже вирішення, що з ними робити. Або переносити, або кріоконтролювати. Yeah, let, yeah, let me translate. Yes. So, um, all right. So, then, um, and, and that's, so, naturally, you know, not every um, retrieved egg uh, will be used in the process. So, again, it's very important to understand because often we're being asked, uh, um, or embryology team is being asked, you know, by the other members of the team on behalf of, of the uh, families, um, you know, doctor, fertility doctor said that, uh, let's say, 10 uh, eggs have been retrieved, but then you telling only eight have been fertilized. Why is the difference? And so Margarita said that's exactly for this reason, that only mature oocytes can be used. Just because egg has been retrieved does not mean that it's going to be suitable for fertilization. So it's very natural process where not every single egg might be fertilized, okay? And it's a very important process as well. Um, uh, and so uh, at this moment, you know, when eggs, you know, are maturing and then the eggs, um, then, then they're being combined with the sperm, fertilized by the sperm. Um, and even the product of that uh, fertilization um, on the first 48 hours, they still being called cells they are not being called uh embryos right even though you already have a product of that it's still cells um so that's just some of the and only after 48 hours that's going to be a day of the development when the embryology will be reporting it as number of embryos they're going to be saying margarita was smiling and she said you know they like to call it our embryos our babies you know they're already seeing that precious after 48 hours they already see it as the baby mm -hmm. E, і e, надалі культивування продовжується до п'ятої e, або шостої доби культивування, тобто 120-144 години. До цього моменту e, пара, яка лікується разом з e, лікарем, який їх супроводжує, повинні вирішити, що з цими ембріонами робити. Тобто, або вони планують зробити свіжий ембріотрансфер, e, вони обговорюють, скільки ембріончиків переноситься, і як потім інші, які залишаються, e, як вони кріоконсервуються. Це теж ва важливий момент, e, тому що, зазвичай, якщо ми кріоконсервуємо по два ембріона e, в одну соломинку, то їх краще 
краще потім і переносити два. Да, у нас є випадки такі, коли, наприклад, були заморожені два ембріона, а пацієнти хочуть один переносити. Або, наприклад, був кесарів ростин, і їм не показано два переносити, а вони заморожені два. Ми можемо, якщо ембріон після вітаєвання гарно виглядає, ми можемо його перезаморозити, вони життєздатні, і після наступного вітаєвання він також спроможний надалі до імплантації. Але ці всі моменти, як кріоконсервувати, поскільки буде перенос, чи буде генетична діагностика, я далі про неї теж розповім, треба вирішити з лікарем на, в цьому періоді від дня функції до п'ятого дня культивації ембріонів в лабораторії. Тобто це такі, ну, я наголошую ті моменти, які інколи залишаються е, такими незаміченими, а потім е, ну, вже неможливо нічого змінити. Їх заморозили по два і все, а пацієнт хотів по одному. Тобто це е, пацієнти повинні проговарювати зі своїм лікарем. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very important moment, which actually I'm so glad that you're describing that. Uh, again, guys, you might be not realizing those things. They might seem to be tiny, but unless it's discussed, you know, there could be some, um, you know, further steps that could be impacting your journey. So, for example, she's saying that, um, you know, um, doctor will be advising by knowing your case, will be advising um how um you know certain steps in uh, um freezing of the embryos which means like you know for example by default it could be that um uh, uh, to a straw two embryos will be uh frozen right so they place on one carrier one straw but imagine the situation that where um you or your surrogate they have a c section and they um you know and you also you know do not want to have you know two embryo transfers you only want to have one embryo transfer so if that has not been communicated to the embryo team that means that when the thawing will be happening for your process in the future uh, uh you know you have two embryos you know instead of one so all of those that's what's very important when fertility team and embryology team are working together we have a very unique situation because you know we control both of the processes in-house but you know if you have any situation where you have fertility doctor in one clinic then they outsourcing to another embryo lab these are the things you should be discussing yes about your process you know how many embryos you want to transfer and so forth um so that and of course you know embryologist also needs to know if it's planned for the embryo transfer, fresh embryo transfer, right? Then it also means that not every single embryo will be frozen. Some one, you know, the best that they're going to be deciding, you know, together with a with fertility doctor or two, if it's, you know, twin uh, for the twin embryo transfer um, will stand frozen. So, uh, and also, of course, the decisions needs to be made about pre-implantation genetic testing ahead of time. So those vital decisions, guys, you, you really need to be deciding on that before even egg retrieval is happening but definitely like if the decisions have not been made they need to happen you know no later than the fifth day right the fifth day of the embryo development so all very important questions mm-hmm. Якщо ембріонам планується генетичне тестування воно може бути буде зроблене так, що ембріон можна буде перенести в свіжому циклі, тобто не кріоконсервувати, а на п'яту-шосту добу. Тоді генетична діагностика, генетичне тестування проводиться на третю добу. Забирається одна клітина з ембріона, це на третю добу культивування. Ембріон зазвичай має вже вісім клітин. Одна клітина – це не травматична, забирається клітинка, віддається генетичну ді... лабораторію для діагностики. Цей метод досить зручний, але він дає змогу оцінити тільки невелику кількість хромосом. Тобто не всі 24 пари, 23 там, і статеві, а тільки на 5, або є набори на 8-9 хромосом, тобто не ті хвороби, 
які дають живонародження, але е, з вадами. Е, або, е, якщо важливо е, дізнатися стать, ну, наприклад, це може бути хвороба, яка пов'язана зі статтю, тому важливо знати стать дитини, тому достатньо, там, наприклад, на 5 хромосом. Такі, е, така діагностика робиться на третю добу, ембріон не кріоконсервується, дорощується до 5 шостої доби і е, е, одразу робиться перенос того ну, ембріончика, який потрібен. А інші, е, якщо вони генетично здорові по цим хромосомам, е, вони кріоконсервуються. І е, одразу ж розкажу, і є е, ще одна методика, так, така ж сама діагностика, але для ембріонів уже 5-6 доби, коли вони стали бластоцистами, тобто це такий самий аналіз, але е, о, уже діагностика йде не по одній клітині, а по декільком, тому що е, на, на той стадії ембріон вже має 120 клітин, це 5-6 доба, і ми можемо взяти, наприклад, 5 клітин і аналізувати не одну, а 5 клітин. І найбільше зараз розповсюджений аналіз – це е, генетична діагностика методом НЖС, який дає змогу е, е, охарактеризувати ембріон по всім хромосомам. Але в цій в такій програмі, де характеризується ембріон і робиться йому НЖС, е, обов'язкова кріоконсервація. Тобто свіжий фреш-перенос неможливий. Тобто ми е, на п'яту добу забираємо частину яйцеклітин, віддаємо їх генетичну лабораторію. Тут наголошу, ембріон нікуди не віддається. Ембріон залишається у нас. Ми його кріоконсервуємо, віддаємо тільки там декілька клітин з нього. Ембріону і тим клітинам, які ми передаємо, присвоюється один і той же номер. Обов'язково. І так кожному ембріону. Є пара, є прізвище, і кожен ембріон пронумерований. З нього взяті шматочки клітин, ну, тобто Групки клітин, не шматочки, групки клітин е, взяті. І е, ембріон номер один, групки клітин номер один, ембріон номер два, групки клітин номер два. Це для okay, того, щоб нам right. прийде. Yeah. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Um, okay, so um, what Margarita was sharing then, another a big decision that you're going to be making, yes, as she mentioned briefly, is uh, whether to do pre-implantation genetic testing or not. So you need to understand that there is type of pre-implantation genetic testing Uh, that can be done on a third day uh, of the embryo development, okay? Uh, at this time, uh, so your embryo is about eight, uh, eight cells, yes? So the... Um, Uh, the extraction is one cell, which she said, you know, it's it's fine, it's 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 health, it's fine for the embryos, um, uh, and the results are received uh, rapidly, fast, uh, you know, before the embryos are receiving, you know, finishing the development to the fifth or sixth day to the full blastocyst, and then your embryos can be transferred fresh. Okay, so with that analysis that is being done. On a third day, you could have fresh transfer and still have some basic data uh, from the genetic testing. Uh, it's not uh, the full uh, chromosome set, not the 24, right? Because um, have not passed the development yet to where all of that could be determined. Um, but typically it's, you know, five chromosomes that will be determined. So, you know, you will get information about the gender and you will get information about three most common deviations, um, you know, that could in essence result uh, in a pregnancy, but then your baby will be uh, continued development is unhealthy, for example, Down syndrome, okay? Um, otherwise, uh, another method that is being used is um, on a full blastocyst, day five, day six, um, uh, pre-implantation genetic testing using NGS method, and that's for the whole uh, 24 chromosomes, okay? In this case, guys, you cannot be using embryos fresh. They absolutely will have to be frozen, and they will have to be, um, you know, because it takes um, several weeks uh, to get the results of NGS. Right. So just, you know, kind of also know that because a lot of times, you know, families might not even aware that they have different options. Um, so but in essence, that that what is happening. Another thing that is very important to understand, again, going back to the integrity question. So when your embryos are created as they well as they developing and, you know, as they come to the full blastocyst or on day three as well, they being all numbered. So, you know, it has your names, it has your numbering, it has some other characteristic that they need, that um, uh, embryologists must have for the unique identification of each biomaterial. Uh, but they're also being numbered, let's say embryo number one, two, three, and so forth. Then when the 
specimen for the pre-implantation genetic testing is being extracted. It's also being numbered in the same way. So the embryo number one, and then the cell group that is being extracted. So on day three, it's one cell. On day uh, five, six, it's about five cells that is being extracted. It's also, uh, you know, number one. So you have that correlating. So then it's really important for the tracking, you know, of the um, healthy, um, it's called euploid and unemployed um, embryos. Okay, here's a question. Is there a way to know if the baby has chromosomal abnormalities before birth of the baby? Um, so some questions may be more to the um, fertility specialist, but at pre-implantation, um, Maria, to yeah, yeah, I just didn't understand. Yeah. I didn't understand. Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, uh, yeah, yeah. So um, Margarita suggests that we separate this question for the um, embryo that has not been implanted yet versus the embryo that has been implanted. Um, so Margarita will answer the question from the perspective embryo that has not been implanted. Yes, and I'm going to just share from the perspective what I have seen coming from the fertility specialist and specifically from OBGYNs, because once implantation happened, that's when there is very important genetic testing that are being done already after implantation. But Margarita can answer the question before implantation. Sounds good? Okay. І після і після амплантації, якщо для цього проводяться е, скринінги, перший, другий, третій, якщо лікаря, який веде цю вагітність, е, щось насторожує, то в кожному якби першому і там ну спочатку другого триместра призначаються певні тести. Там ніпт найбільш розповсюджений тест, коли по крові вагітної, коли в крові вагітні присутні е, залишки е, ДНК е, майбутньої дитини так називаємо неінвазивний тест, набирають кров і досліджують на ну, наявність певних, певних там питань. І е, уже в більш пізньому сроці, там від 16, здається, тижнів, коли робиться амніоцентез, коли набирається е, амніотична рідина, і в, також вона аналізується на, на, на ті питання, які цікавлять лікаря. Тобто і на моменті е, окремого ембріона і на моменті е, уже вагітної жінки до певного терміну е, хромосомні абнормальності можна виявити. Дякую. Угу, угу. um, uh, uh, я переведу, і ви потім mm -hmm. ще раз кажете про uh, преимплантацію генетик тестинг, що там теж виявляється. Так, mm -hmm. да? mm -hmm. okay. uh, yeah, so, uh, Маргарита каже, так, yes, yes, of course, you know, that um, all of those testings can be done. So, in general, again, without going into very specific details, because this is outside of her, you know, uh, her expertise, but in general, you know, once the implantation of the embryo has happened, yes, there are quite a few steps uh, in a process um, that uh, can be done and, and the donors will actually have them as mandatory steps as well. It's already built in into your program uh, uh, on um, genetics, you know, testing and chromosomal testing as well. Uh, so uh, what comes to mind, she says, of course, you know, um, tests like an IPT, NIPT test, uh, yes, that could be done at the earliest stages of the pregnancy, you know, still on the first trimester, that's just uh, by drawing blood. Uh, we have tests um, at the first trimester, end of the first trimester is called biochemical screening. It has a lot of the, you know, different um, analysis and predictions where there is any abnormalities. Now, um, if then there is uh, indications uh, from those tests, or maybe you have a special case where ahead of time you already had indication for that, um, uh, amniocentesis is another test that can be done. Uh, amniocentesis, it is an invasive test, right, because it's, it's going to be extracting um, waters uh, from the 
околоплодной воды, я не знаю, как это сказать. Uh, embryonic, embryonic liquid, yes, so that's, that's right, so that's going to be extracted. Um, so definitely it's not being usually done as just a nice to have procedure, but once you have indications, just because of the nature of the test itself. Um, then we also do the screening at the end of the second trimester as well. Um, that's another important. So it's before week 22 uh, is another very important test. Uh, now, uh, let us also hear what she has to say about the pre-implantation genetic testing. That's the testing, right? Still, um, with certain uh, probability, we'll tell you about chromosomal abnormalities for your embryos. But before embryo transfer, да, э, расскажите нам про вот это э, э, тестирование при имплантации, тестирование, то есть какие там результаты могут получиться, да, по вот этим хромосомам нормалити, и что вы обычно делаете с этими данными? Так как репродукция, репродуктология, как галузь медицины, она досить нова, ну як для медицини. Е, тому е, е, тут все хватається за все нове і е, інтегрується це в життя. А потім, якби з часом, щось, ну так, так же, як і вся наука, щось е, пропонується спочатку, потім починають казати, це не працює, треба залишити це. От так з генетичною діагностикою. Я скажу, як своє особливе ну, власне ставлення до, до генетичної діагностики. Давайте відповідь, я приведу начало. So Margarita is saying, okay, when we're talking about the genetic testing, um, in her area again, she's more responsible for pre-implantation genetic testing, right? So it's on the embryos before they have been transferred. Uh, yes, she said, what you need to understand is um, the whole uh, side of the medicine uh, that is assisted reproductive technology is relatively young. Of course, you know, it has been existed for several decades, but in the scheme of things of the medicine overall, right, you know, for some areas that have been, you know, for many, many, many years, right, compared to assisted reproductive technology, that field is very young. So typically what happens is just like in any new field, not just in the medicine, but, you know, in science, right, and medicine is still part of science, um, uh, People, you know, professionals, they do like, you know, they're trying to come up with, you know, different methods um, of diagnostics um, and, and so forth uh, of analysis. And typically, um, you know, the method comes out and then there will be studies on what professionals think, whether it's working or not. And then there could be studies that, you know, not enough evidence or something. And then maybe that method should not be used. So what Margarita will be sharing with you, this is just her own personal professional opinion. Right. So it's not like, you know, of course, you could find many people that could be disagreeing or agreeing with her. But that's what she has seen and come up with based on her expertise. Я вважаю, що треба все робити за показами. Тобто для кожної процедури повинні бути покази. Це не... Це процес лікування. IVF – це процес лікування. Це не санаторне лікування, це не косметологічні покази, косметологічні процедури. Все повинно бути по показанням. Тому, якщо пара планує генетичну діагностику ембріона, вона повинна обговорити зі своїм лікуючим лікарем, а він вже повинен прийняти рішення, потрібно їм чи не потрібно, тому що є свої покази. Там. Жінка старша 35 років, е тяжкий там чоловічий чинник, в анамнезі е викидні з встановленою генетичною абнормальністю. Ну і ще багато-багато-багато таких моментів. Тому що... Е е коли ми, бувають такі моменти, коли нам приходять аналізи ембріонів, дуже класно, коли є білий і чорний, є здоровий ембріон і є ембріон з генетичної патології. 
Але останнім часом, я думаю, що це пов'язано, я спілкувалася з працівниками генетичної лабораторії, які проводять цю, саме, саме це дослідження НЖС. Їхні лабораторії, вони теж не стоять на місці. Вони розробляють там нові реагенти, нові свої фільтри для діагностики, нові прилади. Вони стають більш щитливими. І якби, з такою людською еволюцією в ногу йде і наука. І от раніше ми отримували результати, наприклад, там ембріон анеоплоїдний, Марія? Я, я, я слышу. Да, ми я не бачу вас. Ага, все, да. Ембріон анеоплоїдний, тобто хромосомно неправильний, і ембріон хромосомно правильний. Зараз дуже багато почало з'являтися мозаїчних ембріонів. Mm-hmm. Раніше теж вони були, але, напевне, така чутливість діагностики підвищилась, що вони виявляються з дуже великою кількістю. Але ж е, кожен з нас, там, і я, і ви, можливо, ми теж були мозаїчні ембріони, тому що ембріон, взагалі, він здатен до репарації. Він, якщо невелика кількість е, неправильних клітин в ньому, він їх викидує і заміщує на нормальні клітини. А буває так, що при діагностиці, Марія, я, ми тут, да, все добре. Да, добре, да. А, буває при діагностиці, ти забираєш саме ці клітини, які мозаїчні. Тобто, ну, саме в цих клітинах неправильні е, хромосоми, а в остальному, в іншому всьому ембріону немає. І результат приходить. Ембріон мозаїчний. І вони, генетики, виставляють процент мозаїки, мозаїчності. І за певними правилами до 30% ми можемо нивелювати цими даними, ембріон переносить. А буває таке, що там, з п'яти ембріонів вони всі мозаїчні. І ти починаєш думати, які переносиш, переносити. Ти зразу, зазвичай цю пару відправля, ми відправляємо на генетичне консультування до генетиків. І що тоді, що тоді робиться? Одразу не дозволяють переносити ембріони ті, які є мозаїчністі, які дають живонародження, але з вадами. Це там, наприклад, 13, 21, 18 хромосома. Найчастіше не переносять мозаїчність, де є три сомії, а більше надають перевагу моносоміям, тобто де відсутня хромосома. Е, і ну, якби, на генетику, на лікарю, який веде е, пару, і на ембріологу, і на, само, на самій парі е, полягає ну, якби, відповідальність прийняти рішення, що переносити. Mm-hmm. І, е, ми переносимо мозаїчні ембріони, і у нас є на них вагітності. Mm-hmm. Тобто, як перекладати так? Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So what Margarita is saying again, you know, going to her opinion, um, she believes that uh, fertility treatments, they are treatments, right? There is a medical necessity for that. Uh, and we should be treating it with such respect. It's not uh, like nice to have procedure. It's not like something that you're just doing, let's say, like cosmetology, you know, procedure where you're changing you know, parts of your body or something just because you decided. So if it is a medical procedure, right, um, and it's a treatment, uh, then it needs to be uh, seen as such, meaning that you definitely, uh, every case should be considered to be very unique, right? And then the decision about whether you need to do pre-implantation testing or not, uh, or any further testing should be based on your case, right? Like um, your fertility doctor should know um, your details so deeply where you have a very transparent discussion whether pre-implantation genetic testing is um highly recommended for you or not for, for for certain reasons right you know like examples could be again this is not like absolutely what you have you know you might have many of them you know or different reasons or combination of several reasons but let's say age right of the biomaterial so you know let's say if the woman is older than 35 years old right pre-implantation genetic testing could be highly recommended right and things like that So uh, that's just one of the considerations why, you know, or why she's saying, or maybe you had some, you know, known deviations in your family or, you know, some genetic testing have been done for you and there is con- some concerns. So definitely it's very good uh, to do. Uh, but also what she needs, uh, what she wants to share with you is just something, you know, she's saying that 
industry, you know, so it used to be where things were very black and white. Okay, meaning, and of course she says it's easier to work this way if you know, okay, you know, this embryo is unhealthy, this embryo is healthy, we transfer only healthy embryos. But what happens is the genetics, you know, just like embryology is constantly evolving and they're becoming more precise and more advanced. The field of the genetics is also evolving. They don't stand, you know, still. And so when the autopsy, you know, not autopsy, biopsy from your embryo, you know, those cells, one cell on day three or five cells on day five, six, and being sent to the genetic uh, laboratory for the pre-implantation genetic testing, they also became more and more precise. And she said that you could see or what she's noticing, more and more reports are coming back, not such black and white, you know, healthy or unhealthy. They're getting more reports of mosaic embryos, right? This is the, the trend that Margarita is seeing in our industry. Um, what she equates it to is that, yes, uh, you know, that the methods are changing, they're evolving, they're becoming more precise, and it's no longer such a um, cut, you know, cut decision, good or bad. So when we're dealing with the mosaic embryos, that's where a very deep evaluation needs to be happening um, in combination with the genetics, embryologist, and also the fertility doctor, right? Again, knowing your amnesis in the family, you know, some of the predispositions and so forth. But she said, okay, if we separate from that and just talking about that in a gene um, generic way, she says, okay, out of the mosaic embryos, what well, typically she would say that mosaic embryos that are uh, less than 30%, you know, have chance for the implantation, right? You know, they could be allowed for the implantation. Um, but it's scope of parameters that we're looking at. So just because something is less than 30% mosaic does not mean automatically, yes, it could be transferred. A lot of the decision-making will be done. Um, another factor that you notice is, um, you know, from some of these discussions and conclusions is typically um, embryos, mosaic embryos that um, could result in a live birth, um, you know, they will not be allowed for transfer. So, for example, um, the embryos that mosaic has indication for the deviation in the chromosome of normality, so 10, 21, 18, right? You know, like your Down syndrome, multiple sclerosis, you know, things like that. Um, also, she noticed that typically embryos that um, uh, stay away from uh, trisomy embryos, so embryos that have indication with the trisomy versus monosomy. So monosomic, um, uh, so it's 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 um, deviation on just you know one chromosome versus you know number of chromosomes. Those embryos uh, probably uh, would be recommended for transfer versus the other. Um, yeah, so all of those things are going um, in, in, in the decision uh, power. But uh, yeah, so again, what we need to know that at every of this phase, you know, when we're talking about, about um, chromosomal abnormalities, you know, every test, <clears throat> whether it's pre-implantation genetic testing or then the testing that is being done throughout the pregnancy, everything is with like percent of <coughs> percent of probability. Yes. So at every moment, then there is additional consultations with the genetics is needed. And ultimately, you will be the one making the decisions. But it's very important that you're equipped with the very good questions and conclusions. So you really understand based on what you're making your decisions. Right. Um, so um, there was something else that Margarita said. I thought it was very important. Okay. Маргарита, что-то я еще упустила? Нет, нет, нет. Вы все сказали. Я просто резюмирующе сказанное. Ну, у пациентов может возникнуть вопрос. Так, делать или не делать? Категорично не скажет никто. Лекар не может сказать, не делать, если есть показы, або делать. То есть, нужно прислушаться к лекарю, который собирает ваш анамнез. Если вы молодая пара, там, вам до 35 лет, у вас... Наприклад, були е, трубні вагітності, видалені труби, то вагітності у вас на, на, настають нормальні. Для чого вам робити цю генетичну діагностику? Скоріше за все, що в пулі тих ембріонів, які виросли, е, якісь будуть з нюансами. Але природа придумана так, що е, можливо вагітність не настане з, яким, з якимось ембріоном, який генетично неправильний там, в якомусь своєму проценті. Е, тобто треба е, дуже чітко е, зважувати за і проти і прислухатися до того, що каже лікар.
Просто я знаю, я теж пацієнтка в інших сферах лікування, і я також там багато що читаю, думаю, додумую, але ж остаточне рішення я дозволяю прийняти лікарю, тому що він перед собою за своє життя бачу багато-багато різних випадків. Якщо він каже, вам не показано, але ви можете зробити, то слухайте його, що вам не показано. Mm-hmm. От не показано. Саме ваш парі. Okay. All right. So yeah, so I'm agree to said that of course um you know so ultimately when you're making a decision again, you know, if you were to ask anyone, you know, are you 100% like, you know, sure in that decision uh, 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 no, like she said it more like that. Um she said ultimately, yes. So what the question that everyone is asking to do to do the testing or not to do the testing or once the testing is done and the results are um, are given to continue with certain step or not continue right you know to continue with implantation or to continue with the pregnancy development and so forth right that's the ultimate question that you have that everyone has um and she said that most likely no doctor will be able to tell you with a hundred percent saying absolutely yes absolutely not everyone will saying with a certain percent of probability based on everything that they know here is what they're recommending so as the rule of thumb that margarita is using uh when she is uh in a seat of the patient right you know not necessarily infertility but you know in other in other uh, areas Of course, like, you know, by the nature of her work, she likes to research, she likes to weigh all the pros and cons. But ultimately, she said when she's facing the decision, um, you know, of magnitude, like you guys are facing as well, um, she relies on a doctor, right? Because she said that the doctor, the one that is treating you, the one that you have selected, ultimately, um, they have seen, you know, hundreds and hundreds of cases. They basing their uh, answer on so many cases and their expertise and um you know they're making decisions so I, she's like i don't know if it helps you but you know if you were to ask for personal opinion that would it be but definitely the industry have evolved a lot and the accuracy of some of this testing and accuracy of the conclusions following the testing you know like the genetics conclusions have been really phenomenal uh margarita have not shared that but um, i just want to say like we had several cases where the pregnancy already um a pregnancy occurred then we were doing you know the neep test you know maybe there was an indication um or you know just our standard assigned test biochemical screening and there have been um then results were coming back for the Uh, you know, percent of abnormality was detected. It was not low. You know, normal results is like abnormality is low. Uh, but then if it's moderate or high, that's when we're going to this whole big discussion between fertility doctor, you know, embryology team, and also genetics team. Very, very detailed discussion. And I need to tell you that the evidence that they presented by looking through thousands of cases, not just, and guys, when we're evaluating those cases, they are not prospective of just pregnancies, specifically being looked cases for the gen, um, genetic cases, for the assisted reproductive technology. And then they're separating those cases for your category, you know, whether it's a donor material used or not, ages, any previous analysis and so forth. So guys, like knock on a wood, every single conclusion that we had actually came back was the results where genetics were recommending for the pregnancy to continue, or they were recommending for the student embryo to be transferred. And then, um, you know, um, the the happened percent where uh, you know the embryo um was recommended yes but uh, of course the natural selection could still work and so the embryo could not implant but for them the embryos that did continue their development and also from the pregnancies we had um we are so lucky that they all developed into you know healthy beautiful babies and that is huge So I guess what I'm trying to tell you that this question that you're having is so important and we are not taking it lightly, just like you should not be taking it lightly, right? Like to make a decision to terminate the pregnancy is a huge decision. To make a decision to transfer something or not, huge decision. So you have a whole big team behind you and that should be like in any clinic you work with who are fighting for your success, but providing to you evidence from many angles so you could the best decision could be made. Okay. All right. Uh, what about, uh, talk to us about preparation of embryos for transfer. I know that this uh, mm-hmm. question, oh guys, and we're at 11 o'clock right now. We're actually on top of the hour. Um, maybe. Okay. 
Anytime I talk to Margarita, we ran out of time so fast. Let's do this. Let's actually, because I promise you that it's already late evening for you. I promise. And we always are sensitive to you guys this time. So unless you type in a, one last question, I propose that we disconnect. Okay. And then send me email if there's anything that you didn't get answered or anything that you wish we would have discussed with our incredible chief of embryology. Uh, please send me a note. We are definitely happy to continue those discussions. Like I said, having um, with us chief embryologist with us on the call and answer transparently whatever you know she's working with is very huge. Okay. Well, I didn't see a question. So Margarita, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we just will love you so much. Thank you for being for the support and thank you for being um, such a vital role and so many successful Babies, pregnancies, it's your role is huge. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, stay safe. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.